in this lecture we will discuss about a new class of accelerators basically the colliders colliders are the accelerator which actually collides the beam means basically one collider consists two accelerators and in these accelerator two counter rotating beams are accelerated and then head on collision takes place and at these head on collision locations detectors are placed to record the events so colliders may be linear accelerator based colliders or synchrotron based colliders presently all the colliders except one is based on the synchrotron the very first collider is the linear accelerator based collider actually accelerators journey started with collision experiment recall the rutherford experiment in rutherford experiment he bombarded alpha particle on the gold foil means some type of collision experiments was there and with this experiment he deduced the nuclear model of the atom and later he envisages that if higher energetic particles are, would be available then nucleus also can be broken or nucleus can be split it so by inspiring these kind of things cockcroft and walton built the first accelerator that was the dc accelerator and using the beam of these dc accelerator they split it the lithium ion so accelerator journey started with the collision experiments however later on it was shown that in case of fixed target experiment means we have some accelerated beam of charged particle and we are hitting on the target rather than if we have two colliding beam we will get much much benefit out of the energies so higher and higher energies and colliders building is started why higher and higher energies are demanded so there are two reasons about that first of that that we if we have higher energy means de broglie wavelength will be smaller de broglie wavelength is lambda is equal to h by p so as p is higher means lambda is smaller so we get a better resolution using high energy beam because each particle is associated with some de broglie wavelength and de broglie wavelength has been reduced due to high energy so resolving power by analyzing those wave waves can be increased the second is directly related to the e is equal to gamma mc square m is the rest mass of the particle so if we have very high energetic particle it can be converted into a more massive particle mean more massive particle can be generated using very high energy beams so now in this lecture we will see one of the important parameters which has to be optimized for making the collider and why really colliders are needed means how much benefit we are getting out of the fixed target experiments to see why colliders are needed we recap some of the things of the relativity we all know that these are the lorentz transformation this is unprimed frame and this is the primed frame and primed frame is moving with respect to there is a relative motion with the speed v in the x direction so x coordinate will transform according to gamma x minus vt gamma is relativistic gamma factor because there is no motion along the y and z axis so these axis will not change and time is also relative in newtonian mechanics time was absolute and this was the fundamental change by einstein the time is also relative so from one frame the other frame time changes by this formula there is gamma t minus vx by c square vx appears because motion relative motion is along the x axis now you can see that instead of v we can write down beta c so this transformation will be x prime is equal to gamma x minus beta c t similarly in the case of time here we can see that we can multiply this time with c so this will be c t prime so here in rhs also we will multiply speed of light c 
and here instead of a square this will be c because one multiplication of c is there and this will ct prime is equal to gamma ct again we will write v by c as a beta this v by c as a beta so now you can see that transformation of x in this new notation is similar to the transformation of ct prime so ct prime can be used as the fourth coordinate and in this fashion we can make a four dimensional space in which one dimension is by the ct prime a ct or ct prime so we can make three dimensional instead of three dimensional vector four dimensional vector in space time so now we take x0 as ct x1 is equal to x x2 is equal to y and x3 is equal to z so above equations can be written down as x0 prime is equal to gamma x0 minus beta x1 x1 this is the relation we obtained from here because x0 is ct so at the place of ct prime we have written x0 prime here it is ct so this will be x0 and x will be written as x1 similarly this equation will be written down as x1 prime is equal to gamma x minus beta x0 these two relations will be there for the y and z so in relativity we can form a four vector relativity can be understood without going into the four vectors However, four vectors provide a powerful way of analyzing some problems and it also opens the way for understanding the GTR. Now we see the beauty of these four vectors. If we multiply these four vectors together, we get c square t square minus x square minus y square minus z square. There is one rule that you have to put minus sign before the space like vectors space like components components and time like component will have positive sign means you can see that this has been initiated like this we can write down x m x t and m is the Minkowski matrix by which we get minus sign here. So in this way, inner product of the four vector is defined. Four vectors inner product definition is this. C square T square minus X square minus Y square minus Z square. Any quantity which can be represented by four vectors in the relativity will have this formulation for their inner product. Now, what what is the beauty of this inner product we transform this four vector inner product into the another frame so let us say that in prime frame it is defined like this c square t prime square minus x prime square minus y prime square minus z prime square now we transform it into unprimed frame so at the place of t prime we will put ct minus beta x and at the x prime we will put gamma x minus beta ct y and z will remain unchanged when we will open this c square t square beta square x square minus 2 beta cxt here we will get x square plus beta square c square t square minus 2 beta cxt you can see that this will be cancelled out by this and take the ct square common from this and this so you will get gamma square 1 minus beta square c square t square and similarly gamma square 1 minus beta square with x square because x square term is this and second x square term is this so you will get 1 minus beta square here also minus y square z square 1 minus beta square itself is 1 by gamma square so this will be cancelled out by this and this will be cancelled out by this. So you will get c square t square minus x square minus y square minus z square. Means this inner product which is defined in this way is Lorentz invariant. 
it remains constant under the Lorentz transformation. And similarly for the energy or momentum, we can define four vectors by taking the first component as E by C, then a space component Px, Py, Pz. So their inner product will also be a constant under the Lorentz transformation or it doesn't vary under the Lorentz current. It is an invariant. Due to this invariancy, we can put momentum and energy conservation law in a very compact form. And it can be used when we study the collision in the colliders. So this will be E square by C square P dot P, the inner product of the four momentum, E square by C square minus P square. This P square is this space-like component and this is the time-like component. So space-like component again has minus sign by our definition. Now you can see that this E square minus C square minus P square is equal to M square C square because we have E square is equal to C square P square plus M square C4. So this quantity becomes m square c square and m is the rest mass of the particle it is invariant so this quantity is invariant so this is an orange invariant now in the beginning studies were carried out using the bombardment of high energetic particles on the fixed target like the rutherford rutherford also bombarded particles on the fixed target that fixed target was the gold foil and later on high energetic particles ejected from the accelerator and then sent to the target and having the collision experiments. However, in 1956, the concept of colliding beam experiment emerged that we have to have instead of fixed target two colliding techniques. Means target is also a beam. So two beam which is having high energy will be colliding. That's why collider is also known as the smashing machines. Now what is the use of collider? Means instead of fixed target, what benefit we get out of the collider? Suppose in the collision of two particles, we have mass m1 and m2. And the center of mass energy can be written down as this is again, this we have written down P, uh, e square by c square minus p square. This is the inner product of four momentum which we have calculated in the last slide for the two particles. For the two particles total four momentum will be p1 plus p2 and we have the square of this. This is the invariant means in the center of mass and left frame both will see this the same quantity. So this will be 1 by c square e1 plus e2 square minus p1 plus p2 vectors and their square. Now in the colliding beams, because these beams are moving in opposite direction, so we have p1 momentum is equal to minus p2 of the moment. Means p1 is equal to minus p2 because both the beams are moving in the opposite direction and then they have, will have collisions. So P1, P2 square will be, this term will be 0 because of the P1 is equal to minus P2 and we are having only this term. In case if collision is taking place at same energy, means both particles are having the same energy, say E1 is equal to E2 is equal to E, then we have this 2E, so 2E square by C square is the invariant and it means energy is 2e 2e is the energy available in center of mass so if two particles having same energy e and are colliding in the collider then the center of mass energy will be 2e this center of mass energy is available for the new events so for new events means new creation of the particles for that total energy of 2e is available in this case. Now we compare this case with the fixed target experiment. 
in fixed target experiment the second particle p2 which is in the target is fixed its momentum is zero so for four square of the four momentum the length of the four momentum will be e1 plus e2 square upon c square minus p1 square p2 is zero here so this will be e1 by c square e1 square by c square this p1 square we have opened these brackets so the e2 square plus 2 e1 e2 by c square now this is invariant for the first particle so and this is equal to m1 square c square we have seen this this is in irrespective of the lab or center of mass this have m1 c1 square this is and this is because the second particle is not moving so e2 will be only the rest energy so m2 square c square and the third at the place of e2 again we will put m2 c2 square and m2 c square c square c square will be cancelled out so this is the available energy in the center of mass frame in the case of fixed target experiment now again take the case of similar particles that is m1 is equal to m2 means rest mass are same suppose proton proton collision or electron electron collision so both the mass are same in that case this equation will be reduced to 1 by c square 2 e 0 square plus 2 e 0 e Now total energy will be square root of this which is available in the center of mass. So total energy available is 2 e0, e0 has been taken out so e0 plus e. So in the case of uh, colliding beam the available energy was 2 e while in the fixed target experiment energy available is this one. This is much much lesser than the colliding beam energy. We take an example for calculating this. Consider that a 7 TV proton hits another 7 TV proton. 7 TV is the energy in the LHC, large hadron collider at sun. Therefore, available energy in the colliding beam facility will be 14 TV, 14,000 G. Now consider that instead of 7 TV, 7 TV, we take a 14 TV proton and hits on the fixed target. So available energy, we can calculate using this formula, 2E0. So 2, I have taken the 1 GV as the rest mass of the energy of the proton. Then again, 1 GV plus 1400 GV. It comes out only 167 GV. So instead of 14,000 GV, we are getting only 167 GV in the fixed target experiment. So compared to fixed target experiment, colliding beam provides a very, very, very high energy. Means many fold massive particles can be generated in the colliders rather than in the fixed target experiment. There is one comparison in this table. Suppose proton and proton hits with 7000 GV, 7 TV, which was the above ex uh, example. So in the center of mass, 14,000 GV is available. And in the fixed target experiment, it is only 114 GV. Here, we have increased the energy to 14 TV of the single proton. Here it is calculated for the 7 TV. Suppose 100 GV electron impinges on the 100 GV. So in center of mass, in the colliding beam facility, 200 GV will be available. While in the fixed target experiment, only 0.32 GV will be available. And if proton hits the electron, one at the 30 GV and another at the 9, 20 GV, these are the numbers closely of the HER HERA collider in the Germany. So center of mass energy will be available as 235 GV in the case of colliding beam and in the case of fixed target experiment this will be only 7.5 GV. One should go through this reference, it will beautifully describe these things.